Welcome to Bunny's Designs. This is a live stream with live people it's on this Sunday afternoon with um, my Daydreams book. I love this book, it's a hardback book with Hannah Carlson. Um, I covered, coloured a couple in, but I started using pencil pastels. Um, and I really like the vibrancy and the ease. Uh, they're a little bit dusty because it is a pastel. It's a pastel pencil, the Derwent. Um, so I'm going to have a bit of a play with using the pastels, but using them, instead of blending them with a blending tool, I'm going to use a damp brush. So they're going to be set, because you can use these as watercolours as well. So I'll pick out... Um, the Prussian blue is quite dark. And, oh, this shall be purpley blue or bluey blue. This one is a very dark. I love this one. This is dioxidine purple. Sorry, dioxazine purple. And that's the one I've used for the little black blue, um, blackberries, for the mice. And it's a gorgeous colour, so I'm going to incorporate that for some shadow. I think that looked quite nice. Um, the seahorses are normally fawns and browns. Mm, they've got some, they've got burnt, a burnt orange. More. There's a brown ochre. And what I normally do is get a little bit of a paper and just have a, a little bit of a practice just to give me an indication of what these colours are going to look like next to each other. There's a French dark grey, but that's going to be a warm grey. And I like the chocolate. I do have the chocolate in the other one. <clears throat> so I'll just blend them because it's easy to blend them to see the colours. And you can see instantly if they don't go together or if they do. Um, do we want a warm seahorse? Or do we want to, I don't think I like them the dark sanguina. Sanguine uh, 20. I think I'm going to go for that one. And then the yellow ochre will be paler colour as well. Mm, I need the medium colour. Raw umber probably. Have a look with raw umber. And brown earth. So we've got these colours outside. Just blow the dust away. I quite like those two together and I think I like the yellow ochre as well so oops <clears throat> I didn't like the tan so we'll put tan away and I've got four colours here I think the raw umber, just that little bit. That was the raw umber. Brown earth was mm, okay. I've got four. Four will do. So I normally try to put them next to each other. So I've got them about. about. So we've got the palest one and the darkest one. So have them in order because they're just easier to pick up that way. So if I draw this section now here, almost got them where we want them. It's the second one, that's the third one, and then that's a very dark. So they look quite nice those. So a little quick test with the rigger. And, and just and see what happens. Might have to be a little bit damper. I don't think I want the darkest one. I don't want the chocolate. 
I think I've got enough with these three. So I've got three colours. I'm just going to pop those back a second. So we've got the palest colour. So I'll just do this really quickly as an experiment. Where I think that the, the, the highlights would want to be. And these scratch really well. So there's hardly any kind of... Uh, So we'll just do this one. We can do the purple, we can do the many colour you want to really. I just thought I would Let's see how they blended. So we have the second colour. They're very chalky because it's almost the pastels are almost like a chalk, so it feels like you have a chalk in your hand. But again, there isn't a, tea, a key to this uh, paper, it's just smooth paper, so we've got to find some kind of way. Getting that into there. <clears throat> and then we have the darkest colour. And again, I've no idea what's going to happen with this at all because I've never done this before. So it could be a complete disaster. I suppose there's lots of videos out there. I should have actually watched one, but never mind. <laughs> never mind. It's an experiment. Just have a little bit of dark down there. A dark down there. And the eye. And then we can just have a bit there. So I'm going to pop those three pe pencils out of the way and just move those up there slightly. So we are going for this kind of watercolour effect, but if we turn it over. It's a little bit crinkled. That's dough and pastels with a damp brush. So let me zoom in. So have we got any questions? If you've got any questions, pop them in caps and then I've got a better chance of having a look. So all I've done is scratch a little bit of colour in there. So I'm going to actually, sorry about the crinkle, I have to do this so it's easy for me. So I'm going to use the, I think I might use the smallest one first. I've never done this before. So the smallest brush and you want it just damp. And what we're doing is just activating that colour and teasing it around. Oh, it behaves itself very well. Let's see what else happens. Uh, we might go to the biggest brush because we want a large brush, but we want it damp. So it'll keep activating it. So we just touch this. So it's very much like the Derwent Ink Tense and the Pastel Pencil. You get the colour on there, the scribble then you manipulate it so it does behave itself very well 
that was quite nice. Um, you can't sm smudge too much, it doesn't go through. <clears throat> so you put the colour on, but it will smudge until it's wet. And once it's been wet and, and blended with a wet, a damp brush. Um, now I've tried it with a water brush and it's just that too much, too wet. So I wouldn't recommend a water brush, but a damp rigger would be perfect. Again, you can get into tiny corners with the damp rigger and just manipulate that colour where you want it. Excuse me, it's, uh, as soon as I start, I've got a frog in my throat. So, I don't just taking a little bit of that off, I don't want it too wet. You just want the tiniest amount of dampness to activate that colour and make a pastel into a watercolour. seems to work really well. A lot better than I thought, but I, I did think it would do it, but it, as I say, it was an experiment. Um, I, I have always known that pastels were watercolour, because they don't have any, it's almost pure pigment. There's just a tiniest, whatever the binder is, there isn't much of it. Um, I suppose it, it's very similar to the difference between a pan of colour, of watercolour, and a tube of watercolour. They both have watercolour pigment binders, but one's obviously thicker and drier than the other. So one allows the paint to dry out and the other one doesn't. Inconsistency. Uh, the tube keeps dry until you leave the top off. So probably it is the same. But that's how I think about it. So this is almost like the next stage from a Derwent watercolour pencil. It's just that bit crumblier. But it works and help uh, itself very well. So all I'm doing is got a, a damp rigger. I mean, you could use it the smallest of brushes if you don't have a rigger, but you would just have to re-damp it a lot more often, that's all. you probably get three or four little stripes out of it rather than quite a lot. And apologies for being in this corner because it looks like it's, it's very dark. So again, you're just manipulating. It's very much like the Caran d'Ache near colour twos, but they're easier to apply because they're softer. They have a waxy crayon, like the art bars, the Derwent art bars, they're waxy. Um, the Derwent pencils are less waxy and the Derwent ink tens are less waxy. But it's the same principle, you scribble a little bit of colour on. <coughs> But the beauty of this is that once you've got the vibrancy of the pastels, but once it's dried, it's set. So you don't have to spray it. And it's not going to smudge. It should be finished. It should be fine. And 
of course you can smudge two colours together now I would think this is called blending with a, with a damp brush if you wanted to call it anything it really wants to just be damp so I'm glad that worked quite pleased it worked because I'd hate to damage your page so you can have it as rough or as smooth as you want so has anybody got any questions um, so I just wanted to try this but the pencils, the pastels are a lot easier to apply you just kind of scratch a tiny bit of colour on We seem to have it's still fairly fast as well, so quite like that as well. You're not messing about for too long. Um not sure what I'm gonna do with those, so I'm gonna leave those. This I'm gonna turn this round, I think the other way now. So that's the right way up. And just mix this round. I did want to actually leave a bit of a gap, but this paintbrush is a little bit wet. This paper can stand it though, it's very good quality. This paper, it's like the um, the Imagine Morphe and the uh, Joanna Basford, it's, it's really nice paper. So a little damp brush is not going to buckle anything. Um, and as I say, I always thought. I have a, such a bad memory that I get things confused so I like to practice first before I say definitely so all your all these pastels that I have outside I can actually use outside and make them into a into a watercolor because I've given all my watercolors and the acrylics have gone the good news is my daughter's let me have just for a, a few weeks she doesn't need them at the moment I've still got the chameleon pens so I'm going to do another few Harry Potter cut books like that. Um, that's my, uh, hopefully my idea anyway. But because of my hands being so bad this week, I would have loved to have bought the full set, but it's not an option for me because it would be a waste. Because probably in six months I won't be able to use my hands. So definitely... Um, I have to go digitally so that's what I'm doing this afternoon so I'm setting up um, tomorrow uh, in the morning in the UK uh, hopefully will be a live YouTube video of oh, sorry um, digital art because I want to do live art in the Abbey and uh, <laughs> sorry that was Alfie under the table So I'm not sure if I'm going to be brave enough, so if I just zoom out a little bit, you'll see the colours. So I've been playing with the colours a bit, so that looks a little bit yellowy. So they do look quite nice. Um, I think I've been everywhere. So they're set. They're just like the Derwents and the Ink Tens, the set. So that's quite nice to know. You've just got to make sure you get every scrap. Um, <clears throat> so they're quite nice. So what that means you could do though is you could, if you wanted a green, you could scribble the green, just like all the others, and wet it. And then you can colour in with it. And 
I'll let that dry and see if we can because I want to try and get these pastels in my in my uh, <clears throat> um, I thought if I made a square of water and scrape some colour in and let it dry that would make a watercolour because they are got the pale colours are lovely so I quite like that I think I'm going to stick with the I think I'm going to stick with the brown actually I've got oh, sorry, the camera I like the colours Anybody got any questions? Um, you can you can feel them, but I would think they're the same as a pastel, as a pencil. Let me have a look. What else have I got in here? Um, but just remember, you've got the vibrant colours. Um, There's a slight difference because there's a coating of paint on there. So there is there is a tiny bit. You can feel where they are, but I wouldn't say they were pasty. They're just on there. You know, they're just they're just on there. It's another coating. It's another layer. Um, but that means you don't need the grease proof paper and you can work as you go along if that makes sense so you know you do a bit and you what you dampen it and you set it and then and, and manipulate it and paint with it to get some nice effects and then it's set so i can just shut that book now i can't do that with this one um, now this is a practice let me look at the back and um, the mushroom at the front was with with proper pastels these um professional pastels the big fat chunky ones um a damp brush, Let's see if I can a damp brush, and manipulate those around. These have been blended in. Now the colours should pop. You should see them being slightly different. Now that's a little bit too wet really, but I just want to quicken it up a little bit. So, But they've been blended first, so they're obviously going to be kind of well into the paper. But they will be, still be manoeuvrable around, it'll still smudge. If I put that over there, it would go over there. So you've got to be a bit careful. And you, know, you can you can see the colours changing, so, but that's now set. That should be set. Just get rid of that little bit of red. So that should be set. Um, I thought the colours might change a little bit. The one I did at the back. Um, you see at the back of the page just got a little bit of a shadow but not nothing very much let's have a look at this one you see because of the chalk see this the butterfly that's because i shut the book without anything this is professional chalk these are sorry not chalk these are the pastel pencils that i use so i used the roundy ones the soft pastels professional quality i use the faber castell chromos pastels and i used the assorted pastels from uh, Windsor Newton. And they're all professional pastels. They were very, very soft and I loved working with them. Um, so I will keep those and put them outside and then I can work outside in the summer with those. But all the other watercolour things have gone. Um, but in theory, what I can do is take the brush and again, just a damp brush. And this has been um, blended. So it's not as easy to manoeuvre because it's already been blended in. But now this is kind of being set with water. When the water dries, that's, that, those bluebells will be set. The same with these little bees.
So I knew that, you, and, in, and I made a watercolour out of them actually the last time, I think, I'm, uh, when I was sharpening a pencil. I made a beautiful watercolour that went to nothing, so I knew you could do it. You see, they just come to life that little bit more. See, there's such a difference between that leaf and that leaf. Um, and with a small brush, again, you can get into small spaces, so that's always nice. I mean, these were huge, fat, thumb, thumb pastels. They're really big, chunky, professional pastels. Um, and again, this is just knocking back that pastel so that I've got the, the lace. So you can do them that way. And again, there's a difference. They're a little bit darker than the, the pale ones at this side. And we'll do half the butterfly as well. Oh, poor, poor Suzanne. She can't get to them. <laughs> um, I'm not sure. I think I might leave them. I haven't decided. I haven't quite decided. Let's just do this side and see what happens. You see the colours become more vibrant. Um, and again, these were the professional ones, the big chunky ones, which is why I've gone over the lines. Um, I wanted, to, I was just desperate to play with the colours. And then, of course, as I say, it was about 2 or 3 in the morning when I went upstairs. The Amazon Gremlin pressed the buy button on the Derwent pencils. <laughs> so that they would arrive the next day. Just a very, very damp brush. You don't want a lot of water. You can see they are I'm manipulating the black line back again, so it's kind of popping out a bit. So I'm just going to water that through there just to make sure and then I can let it dry. Probably this is instead of doing the blending, obviously this is just, this is another way, but this actually sets them so they won't run. And if we do half the butterfly Again, oh, you can just see how that changes. Um, and these on this side as well. You can, if you put the colour on the top just the same, you can manoeuvre it down like this. Just exactly the same as a blender. Yeah, except for I, I'm having trouble with my thumb today. Um, but the colours will pop out really quite nice and it is just a damp brush um, but I'm using my thumb again which is not good so we'll see if we can do it without using the thumb don't have as much control <clears throat> let me just see what that looks like so we just put the focus on actually I'm going to do it the other way because I can't really hold it today the butterfly it doesn't seem to be much difference but there is there is but the water doesn't change it too much so they haven't been 
they have been. So there's very little in it. You couldn't tell looking at it. And that, that butterfly there is set. And that butterfly there, can you see, is not. See what happens? That's pastel rubbing off. But there was nothing rubbing off on this one. Um, but it was an experiment. I just um, so you can see that you know, they will they will move. Whoops! I just take this and get rid of that. And hopefully I can get rid of all of it. So this is my little eraser, which sounds like a bumblebee stuck in a in a wasp's nest. <laughs> so they will smudge if you if you if you rub over them. Um, but the beauty of it is you can normally now this is another experiment to, to show you if you can actually see this so this side is pastel and blended this side is blended pastel and then it's been uh, gone over with water and I want to show you I can take that off, but I can't take, I can take all this colour off. I can take every scrap of colour off this side of the butterfly. All the colour's coming off because it's not set. Whereas this set side is. Even though it's been blended in, it'll come out. You can't see that, but there's hardly any colour at all. i to put my automatic focus on, see if it will focus. I've taken off all the colour from the wings. So that's quite nice. You can actually set them with a damp brush. <clears throat> and again with this one as well, you could do the same with this one. Um, if I was going to do that, I would probably do it like this. I wouldn't blend it in. I would scratch the colour in and then blend it with a, with a damp brush. Um, but the reason I'm doing, I did this one, is I couldn't use my thumb, but I wanted to colour in. So that le left, let me do that. But all this will smudge if I rubbed it. But I shook it three times now, and there's nothing on that grease of the tracing paper at all. So have you got any questions? So welcome to Bunny's Designs. I said this is a, <clears throat> a live stream with live peoples. And I'm working in the Daydreams book by Hannah Carlson. And I love this book. Uh, it's very good quality paper. I'm using my Derwent pastel pencils. Um, the same as I said as I did yesterday with the, the pastel colours. But I'm using them, instead of blending them with a blending tool, I'm blending them with a damp brush. And that makes that when they are dried, as soon as the water dries and they're activated, they're dry. So I'm going to put a little bit of colour into there, I think. So I think I might just put a little bit of... Um... Oh no, I like that. Mm, I don't know. I like them brown, actually, because then I think we could just brighten them up a bit. Use a little bit of violet. So again, just scratching a little bit of colour in, that's all I'm doing. Just scribbling a little bit of colour. 
So I could blend that and it would be blendable and it would be smudgeable. Or I can take a damp brush like I do with the watercolours. When you're watercolouring, just a damp brush, it's just damp. And push the colour around. So it's going to activate it. Instead of being a pastel, it now becomes a watercolour. And you just push it around where you want. Make sure that all the colour has been activated and pushed about. And uh, you can be a bit neater than me, I'm just rushing. And I'm at a wrong angle as well. So the damp brush activating that colour. And you can scribble two colours together and blend them. You can do the same as you can with the others, blend lots of colours. Do a lot of blending. I didn't really think too much about colour for this, but um just activate that colour a little bit there. And that's dried now and it's set. So that became a watercolour. But of course the beauty of these is these are pastel pencils. This is pure, almost pure pigment. These are very vibrant colours. What you see on the end of this pencil is what you get. They are extremely vibrant because they are almost pure pigment so you get the most vivid magical colors and then now you can actually make them into a watercolor and um, so i've got another hot so on the other side a coral let's have a look at some coral colors here so we've got um there's a tomato colour which I really like. So if we take the tomato colour, I used that for something yesterday and I've forgotten now. Again, you get used to the colours, I've forgotten most of them. So in a lot of these colour books, they've got dots and that indicates dark. So what you could do, and literally I'm not using my thumb because it won't work. I'm just scribbling with two fingers here. There's no pressure at all. Just got to be a little bit different because this isn't going to blend with a blending tool. So I've got to be a little bit more precise of where I want it. But, you know, this has taken moments. Whereas if you're blending with pencils, you've got six or seven. So that's taken moments. I'm going to do this one as well, purely because I forget what I've done on the other side. <laughs> And it's a, bit, it's a bit, it's not going to be the same, and I'd like it to match really. So, even though this is an experiment, I don't want to mess up the book too much. So, I've scribbled, literally scribbled some colour into there, and um, again, I've got my my number three Dale Arana Rigger and it's taking a little bit of water off it and I'll zoom in and you can see exactly what happens to the pastel oopsie oops so you activate it and push it about now, at the moment, I'm getting a dead flat colour, but we can go back over and build up. So when it's really pale, I can push that back into the dark. And that should give me a really nice, very soft, pastel effect of coral with the sun going through the sea hitting it a diffused light so you get very pale to kind of really nice warm colors I mean you could have mixed two colors together this is just a, a practice as I say you can mix 
And as long as you haven't activated this as a watercolour, you can rub it out with an eraser. It will just disappear like the butterfly did. And that's all I'm doing. It's just activating the colour. Um, you can start at the top. Now this brush is a little bit, a little bit wetter. This paper would stand it, but I'm going to practice on the Bennett Klein, and I don't think it would have quite the same effect. Um, the colours would be wonderful, but it wouldn't have the same effect. So again using the pastels just as a pastel pencil is very good for a very thin paged book. So I'm going to take quite a lot of water out of there and start at this side here. So thanks for stopping in guys. I say this is a live stream with Life Peoples this Sunday afternoon. And... Uh, I hope Mika recovers from her nasty, nasty headaches. So I'm hoping to do some live streaming on YouTube because I don't know what the chat's like, I don't know what anything the recording's like, it's just I cannot get my digital, um, I cannot get the software to work with Ustream. So I'm having to use um, YouTube for recording. So that's going to be tomorrow. I think I'll keep the Tuesday as a Ustream. So I've got to try and set up the camera so that with Ustream you can see what I'm drawing digitally so I'll be doing some oil painting and acrylics on a digital tablet because I've just sent all my acrylics away <laughs> all my paints away I've still got the water-based oils but I'm not sure I'll be using them so I'm quite pleased I kept the four three colours for the seahorse out because I've mixed them up. So let me just see if I can get this working. So I've got the three colours again for the seahorse. So we had a little bit on top there. Oh, I've got, sorry, I've got the thing on still. That's really bad. Um, I've got the... If I don't take that off, it drives me nuts. It should be better. If anybody got any questions, pop them in caps. If anybody didn't see any suggestions or any requests, um, drop them below and do try to read all it it gives me a notification if I get any any requests so if there's anything you'd like to see or anything you'd want me to repeat oops let me know it's a bit difficult today with this silly thumb but never mind so because I'm using watercolor I'm using more color When I was blending, I just put it in a tiny space and then I could blend it out. But I don't really want to be rubbing too much um, with a with a paintbrush with water because you'll damage everything. So I'm going to put some colour in here. And they're really this fast to use, which I really like if you if you want to kind of get a fair bit done quite nice put that over there a minute. <clears throat> and so I want the, the next darkest to kind of
feel that I am using my thumb a little bit more than I should, but... And just touching a little bit of colour in there. And I think there are two. So thanks for stopping in guys. I hope you are having a pleasant afternoon or morning, wherever you may be. And um, I think brown and then that was darker and I think I did that one brown and that one brown so of course this is the darkest one is in the I don't can hope that we can see yes I need to do more in that color book when I've done this I'll um, I'll finish the page I'll go back to the page in pastel because this is a bit difficult for my thumb and uh, the reason I was using the pastels was my my thumb seized up and I still wanted to color in but I couldn't so I was very lucky to suss out, as I say, it was three in the morning. <laughs> um, and I did sort all my art bars out and my um, Karen Dashner colour twos. And I wanted to make some squares for the ladies that won the um, Streamathon giveaway. But unfortunately, scribbling with anything is, is not really an, an option. Uh, and I can't hold anything, and, and so I can't cut anything. Um, I can just about do this and my digital art so I apologize for everything being late and my daughter's just got some big assignments in so she's not really going to give me a hand I'm just looking at the, the purple that I used I can't remember violet that's what I used because it was at an angle um, and so I can do anything but not with this thumb so apologies for everything being delayed um we'll do that one as well actually um and i was a bit down in the dumps last week so i couldn't really make any any videos so i thought well i don't want to get like that so <clears throat> hence the I knew the pastels would be easy. I didn't think they would be this easy, but they are definitely easy. So that was good. Just need that dark one back again to just finish off this line there. Okay, I don't have any control, you see, over what I'm drawing. Um, and that's not really nice for me, <laughs> I have to say. Um, which is why I'm doing the... I'm doing the... Um, the digital painting and I would should have really finished the Colin Thompson one by now um, so again I've scribbled a bit of color in um, and I can't use my thumbs this is quite good but obviously for detail it's not um, I don't have any control over this so it's a little bit scary if you don't want to go over the edges um, and it's a beautiful book this I don't really want to kind of trash it I'd rather wait till my hands better and then I can go back into it but uh, I panicked a bit last week and thought my hand would never get better so, and I can't use the chameleons even though she's left them so I uh, hope he's gone to see her today to take her some other paints uh, to take the watercolour tubes and 
she's doing animation and illustration so uh, I think really what what it is she she doesn't know how to use the chameleon pens I think she's a bit too frightened to use them because they are completely different uh, plus the fact I did read the riot act at her because they're kind of a second mortgage <laughs> so that may have something to do with it no don't do this with the nib and don't do that with the nib <laughs> so um be scared or silly but I think she has used them and I, I told her what to do with them so and I've made a couple of videos so if she wants to watch her mother which I doubt very much that an 18 year old wants to watch her mother and yeah, so I need to do those oh, you see, I don't have any control over this at all so when I finish the seahorse I'm going to have to finish because I just I don't want to oops I don't want to go over the lines and just using your wrist you don't have a lot of control when you're just using your wrist and quite like the colors though it changes them very slightly I think I would say it changes them very slightly But of course they blend beautifully they, they, they're almost if not better at blending than the derwent pencils you, you scribble those and you just color flows together and so do these it's it's just quite amazing and as i say i knew professional ones did it but i didn't i wasn't sure how pigmented these were but uh, Sometimes you say things and you get, I get things mixed up and I say things and I think, oh, I shouldn't have said that. But if I say I think, <laughs> um, I say I think it does this, that means I'm either right or <laughs> I'm completely on the wrong track. And again, I've forgotten to do the little dots in between. With the darker colour, so we've got matching, a matching pair of seahorses. I probably could have thought of better colours for this, really, but kind of using my thumb, which I can't do. Don't want any blaspheming live, do we? You only want a damp brush, just enough to activate that colour. And of course any pastel will work. If you've got some big areas to colour, you can use your big pastels. <laughs> Sorry. I just had an Eric Markham moment. It's not going to get many ice cream, sell many ice creams going at that speed. I just need to put the, the darkest brown into that little circle in the centre. So again, that was fairly quick. You know, it's a whole, it's a whole um, seahorse. Oh, thank you, Dad. Well, I do try. I don't think I was inspiring anybody. Oh, I did put. I have put the brown into there. I wonder why I didn't colour it. Yes, I did. I, I did try. I was a bit of a grumpy pants just last week, beginning of the week. Um, just a bit of a grumpy pants. So apologies for all the videos last week. They have all got my thumb stuck in the way. <laughs> stuck in the way. Because it's, it's a bit dead still. Um, and I'm hoping it's going to come back, but I have. Once the nasty crystals have a bit of a play in there, there's not much room in the joint for anything else. So, um, but I quite like the idea that they are set. Oopsie, I'll put that over there for a second. 
I like and I'll pan out. So I quite like the idea that they are actually now set. And they won't smudge. That looks okay. It's probably an, the, the light's gone because of course it's it's tea time here, so the light's kind of a bit iffy now. Um, my if my my table was flat straight up that would look better they're the proper colors so the coral looks quite pretty actually um and again i've got clear hands you know the, the, it fit, you can hear this is just nothing on it that's a little bit of almost like a watercolor wood i would think it's the same as the watercolor you know there is there is a fine film on there um, but they're set so I'm going to end this uh, particular bit is there oh bye bye kangaroo babe yes you're, you're at the other side of the, the planet aren't you darling <laughs> yes. thank you for stopping in um, so I'm going to stop that one and I'm going to go back into the Colin Thompson because I'm going to find that a little bit easier um, as again I, I love this little book and I did enjoy doing this um, and I think I did a, a different video, but again, I think there's three videos with it. But the problem is, uh, when I was colouring, and it was fairly quick as well, um, very, very quick, it, a few seconds each particular um, colouring, and just scratched a little bit and then blended it up to the pale bit, left a, a completely white area, and then blended it up to it, and it gave the most wonderful um, highlights on those blackberries um, and I really enjoyed that very very simple and that page was a particular page that I'd seen somebody else do and I'd seen it in this book and this is the reason I bought it I bought it for the bunny for Thumper but I also bought it because I wanted to do these colors and then in my original set they're so pastely pale I do not have a deep a deep blue, um, a deep purpley blue, and as I say, that naughty Amazon gremlin at three o'clock in the morning made made me <laughs> made me buy three Bennett Klein books, and um, the Dur went intense. Uh, the Dur went pastel pencils, uh, but I do love them. So I have another set of seventy-two pastels and I've also got a set of 72 watercolors as well and of course they're going to be completely different to my if you look on the back if you can see if there's a chocolate I don't think that there's a sepia I don't think there's a chocolate well there is there's a chocolate and there's a chocolate so let's just have a little bit of an experiment before I finish so that and I've got three chocolates actually because I've got the chocolate in the original set Ow, sorry, my shoulder cracked. So it's a chocolate 66B, and then it's a chocolate six, uh, P590 in the pastel, and it's a chocolate 66 in the watercolour pencil. So let's just shut that and have a little bit of a quick experiment on watercolour paper. So this is the creamy waxy um, watercolour and then this is the original which if you see look it's so creamy and pastely and that's the original um, portrait set and then this is you see it's a little bit scratchy and that made me think they've changed a lot of things in the pastels but these are probably 25 years old maybe 20 years old something like that and this is the pastel the new set so let me have a little brush we'll just have a very quick play so i just want a damp brush so this is the gorgeous watercolor i'll do that a little bit watery so you can see what happens you see because you could use these pastels on watercolour paper. This is the colour. 
and again just blends just as good and then these are the new ones so they're all chocolate and they're all Derwent so even though I've got three different sets um, they're just slightly different these two are, uh, are a lot different and these two are very similar but this is a little bit cooler it's almost got a bit of Payne's grey in there as it carries on it's a cooler chocolate colour than this one if you can see those colours oh night kangaroo babe thanks for stopping in anybody else anybody else that's popped in oh hi Suzanne welcome to Bunny's Designs beloved ghost anybody else popping in I'm just having a bit of a play with my pastels um, so although I've got the three chocolate colors they're going to give me three different watercolors uh, and I really like that idea so I'll stop this video and then I'll go back into um, coloring the Colin Thompson book so thanks for watching <laughs>